the, from the very get-go. Um, I came from a very creative family. Um, like I said, my father, um, my father pushed me tremendously, but in a good way. I, I always enjoyed it. So uh, from the time I was seven, <laughs> you know, I really knew that, that that was the direction that I wanted to go in. I studied, I, in high school I had Barkley Sheeks, who is a, uh, a major player here in Virginia, yeah. and um, I studied with him for five years throughout high school, so how could you miss? And he did acrylic, which is what I love. Uh, he was a realist as well, which is uh, something that you know I, I studied. And um, then I went to school in Newark, uh, New Jersey. I could see New York. Um, I couldn't afford New York, <laughs> so I was there. And that's something that I love about this style is that it creates itself and I am not detailed. And I love that part, you know, that, that my detail might be just this one little bit, in, you know, right there and um, a little here. But, but all of this is layers of different colors and it gives you the, the look and feel of, of an ocean or water, but it's not, you know, it's not like the, um, it's not a realist, it's not uh, so pinpointed. There's a, a, a great artist called Maxwell Parrish that is an illustrator. Um, I love Maxwell Parrish. And I read up on how he, you know, does his work and he does it in layers. And that's what I do. I, it's very white when I start so that there's the brilliance of the white coming through and, um, you know, and putting on more white and then I varnish it. Uh, I might highlight the clouds a little bit and then varnish and then you start applying the colors so that there's a transparency and that's why you get such a brilliant red and, and golds and uh, greens, you know, all snapping out like that. When I do, you know, get started, Yes, I've seen the, the red trees and things like that in the fall, but um, no, I love just letting it be what it's going to be. And it, it truly does create itself um, with, with this method. Um, I don't know sometimes if there's going to be water. Um, I don't know if there's a hill back there. And sometimes, of course, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> you know? And then I wipe it out. And in wiping it out, I might create something different. And then I go with that. So yeah, the canvas is definitely leading me. I'm not directing it as much. I do like I, I mentioned earlier. I um, applying the texture, um, which can be anything. It, it's not you know it's not uh, anything special with the texture. It's the way that you apply it and pull up the. Um, I lay like newsprint over it. Sit there for just a moment. Again, I can't wait. And then I pull it off, and then I slant it another way and pull it off. So I, I put all of that on there very quickly. It, I learned the hard way that the newsprint will stick if you don't. And um, so after that, then I cover the whole thing again in white paint so that that it's all uniform. And uh, come back in with the. I start out usually um, with the white clouds. And I might put a little darkness down here just so I know what's going on, you know, so that I don't lose my direction once I've decided where I'm going. And by putting in the white clouds, then what I do is I varnish it and come back in with a brown, um, you know, like uh, burnt sienna, one of those, and I'm, I'm rubbing the whole thing. It, it softens up the white. Then I pull back and I varnish it again and come back in very quickly and start wiping things. I love the colors, I think, you know, so. I also try to create a distance. I like to confuse you just a little bit, you know, where that distance is, where is your perspective on this and your horizon. Um, I get a kick out of that because everybody's a little fuzzy on what's going on. Katrina, you know, of course, that changed everyone. Um, there are so many of us and all of my friends and Anyone that I knew, everything changed. And I did lose my home and I lost my studio and my all of my artwork. My plans were laid out three months in advance and all of that was gone. All, all of my workload was gone. You know, the galleries were gone. Um, things that I was connected to were gone. So um, basically you're trying to rebuild. I was focused on that and moving along. And then when I did try to paint, it just wasn't there anymore at all. And it was heartbreaking, I mean, because that's who I am. And I was always a very happy artist, you know. 
After that, though, after the storm, I sat back and I really tried to focus and try to find it all again. Somewhere in me, I had to find something that I could be very, very proud of. And um, I'll actually tell you a little story. I was sitting down painting, and again, it wasn't working for me to sit in this very small, confined area. And I was painting, and I uh, was very frustrated. I, I at one point wanted to throw everything away and just start completely over uh, in a new life. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I was painting, and I, I left it frustrated. It was a landscape. I came back, I picked up my brushes, and I started painting, and that was when I was moving around a little bit, and I thought, oh, uh, I like this, this is working. It, it got me motivated, but I went to bed that night, and when I got up, there was a, um, a very small tree right in the center of all of this greenery. And that tree just represented everything for me, you know, and um, as every artist should, I have a therapist. This is a great friend of mine almost, you know, like just a, a good girl, always, always behind me, and I called her and I said, I'm going to send you this because she was really prodding me, just paint, just paint. And I sent it to her and she called me that afternoon on a Sunday and just said, you have it back.